This is Keith from iRepair Autos and we're looking at an air intake manifold for the Mercedes-Benz and if your Mercedes-Benz car is equipped with a 3.0 or 3.5 V6 engine M272 or M273 you may at some point or you're currently experiencing problems where the car has a poor idle, loss of power, check engine light is on with codes P2006, uh, sometimes followed with other codes. And this problem is caused by an air flap inside this Mercedes-Benz intake manifold braking. These are the ports that go down to the cylinders and the flaps are right inside each port and this is what I'm talking about this black flap this is made out of plastic and it opens and closes based on let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see see that flap opening and closing it opens and closes based on the needs of the of the engine as far as oxygen goes and uh, this problem is caused by the air flap inside the Mercedes-Benz intake manifold braking causing unexpected and supremely deficient performance depending on the orientation of the flap that has broken uh, these flaps getting gummed up and then sticky and then the weakest part in the system breaks and the weakest part in the system happens to be you're looking at the updated one this is a metallic uh, brace but the plastic pieces the original ones has a plastic piece so this could break or any one of these actuator uh, plastic pieces could break as the flaps on the inside get harder and harder to move one of these four pieces can break so as I was saying earlier some of the components that go bad on these air intake manifolds for Mercedes are that the plastic pieces these pieces here these rods are made out of plastic and they can when the internal flaps get uh, corroded with gunk if those flaps get harder and harder to open and close and the weakest plastic piece will break usually um, you could have seen breakage or parts that break right in the rod itself or the connection piece usually at the connection piece they will break and once it breaks the flaps on the inside of the manifold are stuck in that position so when these on an air intake manifold that's working when it receives vacuum these actuators will create a vacuum and close let me correct this back put it back these actuators will cause this pivot to either open or close the valve so when you're at an idle at a stop sign or a stoplight the flaps on the internal side will close partially so that a lot of air is not going in to the uh, area with the piston to mix with the gas so the gas is backed off the air the amount of air coming through is reduced and internally we you know you can't see it here but there are other flaps on the inside as well those flaps will open and close such that a longer path is taken and that's why they call these variable length intake runners or manifolds so the flaps on the inside will close in such a way forcing the air that's coming through the back port through the mass airflow sensor and all that it will come in 
and it will have to take a long path all the way down and then out to be mixed with the fuel and what you then find is as these air intake flaps are partially closed a lot of that air is then forced or held back inside this chamber because the car is idling there's not much demand for air or fuel and because of that you get reduced gas consumption better uh, fuel economy now what happens as soon as you decide to step on the gas what happens is at that point those flaps then readjust and open so that there's no longer a long path and the air comes straight in including air that's already built up inside the chamber and it comes through and it's immediately used by the by the motor so the most common part to fail on the Mercedes manifold is one of the actuators one of these actuators for the variable system causing the interior flap to become disconnected and uh, once that interior flap becomes disconnected it's gonna stay disconnected and, and it's gonna stay in the last position that it was in so if it broke while you were at idle it's going to always stay in the in the low RPM idle position and it'll, it'll idle fine but if you try to accelerate away because it's closed the car is being starved for oxygen and it's gonna say it's running uh, low oxygen and and the computer is gonna try and compensate by backing off on the fuel you'll get misfires and all that the inverse is also true if you are gunning it down the highway at which point the flap was in the wide open position and one of these actuators broke then when you come to an idle the car is going to idle horribly it's going to have too much oxygen for the RPMs of the car and the computer is again going to try and compensate by running it a little bit rich because of the lot of the oxygen is going to register lean it's going to dump more fuel in there and you will see that your RPMs are fluctuating it's going to rev low than high then low than high and it's it's not what you want my biggest suggestion to you if this has not happened or if it has happened and you have to replace your intake manifold once your intake manifold is installed make sure to keep your PCV uh, system clean and tidy using only the highest quality oil which is synthetic and and change that oil frequently this will ensure that your intake system will stay clean and your various moving parts on the inside of the manifold will move unrestricted which will reduce chances of breakage on the outside I have seen internal flaps warp so even though you may reach, you know, you may fix the external piece, those flaps have warped on the inside, and at that point, you should just go ahead and replace the whole uh, intake manifold. Some of you may say, "Hey, um, you talk about the long runner and the short runner, as described in this drawing. The long runner is when, you know, the air has to take a long pathway." To the uh, combustion chamber and the short runner is when it just takes a short path because a lot of oxygen is needed all at once um, basically your intake runners are tubes that go right into the cylinder head and uh, the intake air travels down this tube to get to the cylinder as the intake valve closes as these valves on the inside open and close but more specifically when they close the air going into the engine hits the back of the valve and bounces back 
that pressure, you know, that pressure wave will ricochet back up into the intake manifold until it hits the back where it will bounce down the runner. And the trick is to have the pressure wave arrive back at the cylinder right when it's needed, right as that valve opens. And that will achieve the most dense possible air mixture passing into the combustion chamber. And uh, it will give you the amount of pressure, the right amount of fuel to air ratio that, that will get the car going and will give you the best uh, MPG miles per gallon uh, for that motor. This is one of the reasons why you see Mercedes, even though it's a V6 or a V8, you're still getting high miles per gallon. You can, on the SUVs, you're seeing MPGs in the high 20s um, without any sacrifice in performance. This air pressure that I just mentioned, there's a term for it. And basically, it's called the Helmholtz Resonance. And in a nutshell, when you blow air, if you were to take an empty bottle and blow air right across the opening at the right angle and at the right pressure, it makes a whistling sound. That is what that resonance is. The resonance is the sound. It's at the right, perfect alignment, perfect pitch, perfect amount of air pressure, and it gives that sound. That's called the helmet's resonance. And that's what's happening inside this intake manifold when those valves are adjusted just right. They're variable adjustments. It's not just an open or a close. There's an open and, and there's a huge variation in openness and closeness for that. And that's to achieve the helmet's resonance at all RPMs. For those of you who are curious about the formula, all right, so it can be shown that the resonator uh, angular frequency is given by this formula and um, all of these fancy uh, symbols just stand for um, this is gamma and the A is a cross-sectional area of the neck so in the case of the um, the air intake it's the, the area where the air comes in from the back and um, that's that's where the area of the cross-sectional is, is found um, M is the mass in the neck and uh, P0 is the static pressure inside the cavity so that's the static pressure inside of the whole complete air intake manifold um, V0 obviously is the static volume that's going to be inside that cavity the amount of volume of air that it can hold at any given time So for if you were using a cylindrical or rectangular neck, um, we'll have uh, L EQ, which is the equivalent length of the neck um, with an end correction. And you can calculate that by saying uh, the equivalent, equivalent length is equal to Ln plus .3. and uh, where Ln is the actual length of the neck and the D is the hydraulic diameter of the neck so that's how you find uh, how you'll find Leq or the length equivalent and uh, Vn is the volume in the neck so Vn the volume volume of air in the neck so V0 so thus after all of that that's where you get the 
pass. P0, P0. And I could just say A over the mass. I don't have to square that. A over the mass. Uh, the volume over the length equivalent. Uh, P0 over V0. And then from the definition of, of mass density, if you take the definition of mass density, um, you'll get Which gives you over two pi, and uh, so FH is the frequency is the resonant frequency that you're looking for in hertz, and the speed of sound in a gas is then given by V is equal to. And then you get the frequency. So the frequency will be frequency in hertz is equal to two pi area volume times length equivalent. And if you look it up in any book, you'll find that the length of the neck is in the denominator because the inertia of the air in the neck is basically proportional to the length. Um, the volume in the cavity appears in the denominator as well because the spring constant of the air inside that cavity is inversely proportional to its volume. And the area of the neck matters for two reasons. Increasing the area of the neck increases the inertia of the air proportionally but it also decreases uh, the velocity at which the air rushes in and out. So depending on the exact shape of the hole, the relative thickness of the uh, surface area with respect to the size of that hole and the size of the cavity, this formula can have a, a couple limit, some limitations. So it's, it's not exact. If you want a more sophisticated formula, You'll have to derive that analytically. And um, I'm probably boring you to death at this point. So all of this is to just describe the um, how they come up with the variation in the variable air intake. That hole in the back of the air intake manifold is monitored as far as the air coming through with the mass airflow sensor that comes before that. It checks the air, the pressure of the air, the temperature of the air, the quality of the air as well. Um, it's able to detect if it's running in an enriched environment. Enriched environment meaning if there is gasoline. I've tested this before where I've left a gasoline container opened in, in the garage and that gasoline vapor has gone into the air and enriched the air with gasoline. If you st then start the car, it will detect an enriched environment and lean out the car, lean out the, the, uh, the amount of gasoline that's coming through the injectors. So there's a lot going on in this simple piece. Unfortunately, because it's so technical and because there are lots of moving parts on the inside, flaps opening and closing in variation. 
and these flaps being made of plastic and they're being subjected to heat they're being subjected to oil that may slip past the PCV they're being subjected to uh, soot over time their opening and closing may become affected and as those parts get harder and harder to turn these pieces on the outside can break will break have been broken so hope this helps um, shoot me a message if you have any questions um, there are some places that are selling this piece online the replacement piece is made out of aluminum it's really light so if, if if you're finding that your piece is broken here or anywhere on that piece you can get that my biggest suggestion to you is to maneuver manipulate these flaps to make sure that they can open and close properly these flaps the interior flaps are harder to test if this is broken in any way these two flaps I would not suggest you trying to repair this because those flaps are probably spun out of control on the inside they may be broken on the inside and you don't know the current position of those flaps those current position of those flaps are what creates the internal variation whether it's going to take the long runner like I showed earlier at idle or the short runner path when you're stomping on the gas when you're going down the highway so keep that in mind if you found this video helpful confusing educational in any way including the helmets resonance um, wind throb explanation Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and, and let me know. Thanks.